Uh, hi there, this is James from Van Tesseract um, on Heavy Radio and the Heavy Podcast. And uh, we will be coming over to Australia at, at the beginning of May on our World of Being tour. Make sure to check us out. Beautiful, James. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. So Tesseract returned to Australia after a six-year absence for the War of Being tour, starting in Brisbane on May the 2nd and going through Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide before finishing in Perth on May the 9th. Like, it's not far away now, bro. Are you, are you the sort of person you're packed and ready to go with your bag sitting by the door or do you leave it to the last minute? I, and I haven't thought about packing. I'll probably, I'll probably <laughs> leave on... We, well, we're coming via India and we leave on Tuesday next week, so I'll probably pack Tuesday morning. Wow, via India? Have you got gigs in India? Yeah, we've got three shows in India on the way to Australia, which uh, breaks up the journey. Wow, I didn't, didn't know India had a metal scene over there. That's awesome. Yeah, I know we're doing three shows there. We're doing Bangalore, uh, Mumbai and Delhi. And yeah, they've got a pretty, pretty healthy scene growing there. It's really cool. Yeah, wicked. So six years since you've been here last time, bro. Like, it's a long time. So what's changed with Tesseract since you were here last this time? Uh, well, I suppose, uh, I mean, a lot of time has passed. We've uh, uh, been able to work on and release an album that everyone is more happy with than we have with any record before. Uh, we've also really kind of tried to up our live game and um, not only just focus on playing our instruments, which I guess was a big focus for the band, <laughs> much of it's good, to make it a bit more of a show, um, a bit more of a performance, add some theatrical elements. Um, we're basically just uh, uh, trying to be the, in the last six years, really tried to wipe our game into being um, an exciting rock band rather than just a bunch of guys nerding out. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the perfect segue into my next question, mate. Like the press release makes reference to your mind blowing live show. So can you elaborate on that a bit for us? Oh, that's very kind of the press release. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I think uh, well, on the current on the world of being tour at the moment, we've got like a we're playing a good chunk of the new album because uh, well uh, we're really happy with it and we want to play as much as possible. Uh, we're throwing in some of like the you know, fan favorites and um, brothers and um, yeah, we're trying to make it just like a and a, a bit of a journey from start to finish. So there's lots of changes in atmosphere. Uh, uh, we worked a lot with the lighting production uh, uh, and to. I don't know, really, I don't know, make it as much of a visual experience as it is an audio audio experience. And, uh, okay. It's been so, going okay so far. It goes so far so good. <laughs> so, and anyone that knows anything about Tesseract and, and your back catalogue, mate, like your music's very diverse and it, it's technical as fuck. So does it make it difficult coming up with a set list that's sort of cohesive and flows with so much going on? Uh that's a good question. I think quite often the big thing is working out which tricks can tracks could link to others because generally we don't have any any gaps. It's kind of uh, once the show starts, there's always something going on. So whether it's songs linking from one to the other, or whether there's like an atmospheric pause where something visual will happen on stage. So I think that's the hardest part: working out which tracks have worked together and how. It's like putting together a jigsaw in a way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Quite happy with, the, with what, what we've got on this tour coming up, so I think everyone should come and watch. Very good, I do too. <laughs> so, on, along those lines, bro, like you mentioned before, that you try to make your show more exciting, but the style of music you guys play, it, it's not easy to do. Like, so you, you'd have to pretty much concentrate on what you're doing, playing wise. So, it's sort of it'd be it'd be hard to get that balance between being exciting and and not striking a bum note, I guess. Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, I guess we're not sort of like. I know, Dillinger escape plan and leaping off things and like, <laughs> smashing stuff up. Um, but I think it's just like more just in terms of, uh, yeah, I guess more subtle things, um, like in terms of where we position ourselves on stage, where I mean, we've got sort of various risers now where we can just, uh, I don't know, just appear a little differently um, throughout the set. Um, also, I think with lots of the older songs, we've been playing them forever, so they're complete muscle memory. So as long as we don't sort of massively yeah. jar ourselves to, you know, you know dropping the guitar or whatever, you can generally get away with them. And with the newer stuff, I think at the beginning of the tour, when we were in the US, a lot of that was really trying to get that down. So I suppose we are we haven't quite got that performance ready. It took us a tour to really get comfortable with it. But now we've done the whole of Europe, we're, we're very comfortable with the set, and so we can really focus on 
um, trying to make it more entertaining rather than just, am I playing the right note? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually got any songs or written any songs that you've found too hard to replicate live? Is... Uh, yeah, uh, there are a couple. Uh, which we have tried. Uh, one of them is the song Eden from the first album. We tried playing that like, playing that live a few times, and and, uh, and it's uh, yeah, I guess we just struggled to all to, to kind of feel it and uh, get it feeling right. So we kind of shelved it. I've been campaigning to bring it back, but not me. All the <laughs> other guys. Um, another one is Singularity off the second album. We had we did play that on the Dream Theater tour. Anyway, because we we went out of Dream Theater, so we're like, let's play the hardest song we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, show them up. <laughs> but, uh, and to be fair, we could just about we could play it, but it's it's really hard work, and uh, it's one of those songs. It's a long song where it's just like there's just no letting up. It's just like you got to you know, play to the top of your ability for a good eight minutes, and that's quite tiring. Sometimes you need a rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are getting older, mate. <laughs> 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 now as the name of the tour suggests you're promoting your new album war of being which comes out on september 15th so tell us a bit more about that album musically is, is it what fans would expect um i think it's uh i mean like with every, every tesseract record we try to make it an evolution from the last and uh, bring in new elements and uh to ultimately make it in yeah interesting for ourselves and um and that's first and foremost important we need to be enjoying it for us to even think it's worthy of playing to anyone else and um i think we got we had a good five-year gap between records and that really allowed us to really make the record we wanted to hear i think um uh and it's uh there's a little sort of nod back to like the older progressive like long songs like the type of track war of beings like sort of an 11 minute kind of yeah, piece of work which is something that yeah i feel like we've missed from the last few records it's really nice to do that again um and uh and yeah i think uh i know it's uh i think everyone put their absolute most into this one i i feel like it's the best record that test right's ever made but then um, i would say that i'm in the back. of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm gonna read another piece for you from the press release so we'll see if chris is throwing you under the bus this time mate <laughs> uh -huh. it, it describes it as how the, the new album is having the aggressive intensity of one the intricate song structure of Altered State, the, sing, the song, songwriting prowess of Polaris and the mind-boggling technicality of Sonda. Uh, would, would you agree with that statement? Oh, well, that's very nice of them. Um, yeah, I guess so. I think there are them. Uh, I mean, we definitely tried to make the heavier bits heavier, which is a nod back to the first album. Um, and, uh, yeah, things like, uh, I mean, uh, Altered State was essentially like four long pieces of music, so I suppose uh, the, the track that I was talking about earlier was a nod back to that. And yeah, I think I think it's fair to say that. Well, that that would make it the best album you put out, then, wouldn't it? Yeah, I reckon so. <laughs> <laughs> it's also got a great con concept to the album, mate, which sounds fascinating, and I don't think I'd do it justice if I tried to repeat it, mate. So tell us a bit more about the concept. All oh, right. Well, it's basically. Um, I'm not the expert on this. This is where <laughs> this is definitely as well. But it's basically a story uh, about two characters called X and L, and it's um, a lot of it is um, is it's the war of being is about war within yourself and inner conflicts and um, resolving them. And it's basically a big sci-fi story involving spaceships and characters um, telling this story about internal conflict. And that's the best I'm going to give you. <laughs> no, mate, you've got me intrigued already. We'll, we'll we'll leave people with a little bit to digest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you've released the title track as the lead single, mate. So why choose that particular song to introduce people to the new new music? Um, I think partly, I mean, for me, it's my favourite track on the record. Um, but also, it's you know, it's the first music, new music we would have released in over five years. So we thought we'd give everyone a really big chunk of music, and so it's like it's an eleven minute, so it's like this track's back. Here you go have a massive long aggressive <laughs> song yeah. and uh and uh and the video a lot of effort work was put into the video uh to make it uh a real spectacle and so yeah it's just a real statement of intent it's like here we are we're back here's something epic very cool and speaking of the music video mate like it sort of centers around two feuding samurai but what I want to know was, was it any of you guys in the band inside those samurai suits or did you have 
hired guns. I do not know. Um, no, uh, it was actually done with. There were two sort of uh, two martial arts experts who were. They were actually filmed and like mapped on you know by computers, which were then turned into the CGI. So there were actually real people modelled. Wow. Um, but yeah, it wasn't us. It was people that knew what they were doing. <laughs> I was going to say you would have got to take out a lot of um a lot of pent up frustration on each other from over the years if you were. <laughs> <Dangerous>. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of computer generator, mate, like the the cover art's been AI generated, which is sort of it's only a new thing that people are getting into these days. So tell us a bit about that. Mm. I mean, it's quite a hot topic at the moment, um, and uh, uh, it's we've always been very transparent with our approach with, to AI. Um, uh, basically, Amos had like a wild, crazy concept. And um, he did actually start trying to talk to art, you know, try to find artists and try and bring it to life. But it was struggling enough to find artists that were completely getting his ideas. And then the some that did wanted to charge more than it cost to make the entire album and video altogether to do it. Um, and so that's why he went down the AI route with it, which um, I know is partly, is slightly controversial at the moment. But I guess our justification for doing it was, is it was, uh, to basically convey uh, the art that Amos had in his head, he he found a way to do it with with online, you know, with, with AI as a tool, and then and um, I think it worked brilliantly. And there'd been no way we could have done it without AI. And um, and uh, yeah, it's an interesting debate because like so many other bands are getting loads of shit for using AI, and nobody's actually given us shit yet. We're waiting for <laughs> we're waiting for some maybe not many people. Up. Maybe not many people know yet. They'll listen to this, and I'm I'm, I'm the one throwing you under the bus, not Chris. <laughs> That's right. We're, we're ready for that debate because I, I, personally, I think it's uh, it's it's a difficult one. Lots of people say it's taking work away from artists, but I don't know. I see it more as it's a tool. It's a, because like AI doesn't make the art. It's basically you tell it what to make from various inspirations, and that's what an artist does anyway. Um, it's basically I know, it's like yeah. Would you say Photoshop was taking work away from painters, or would you say, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, the, the the camera was an invention that took jobs away from? Yeah, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's like whatever gives the best result for the person using it. In this case, it's you guys. That's the way. It's a no-brainer. You'd go with that. Like, it's are you going to take something that's inferior just to keep people happy? At the end of the day, it's yeah. I think the key thing is, is I think for me, art is a human thing, and like the idea, it's the idea and the concept and the message and that kind of thing. And like uh, the creation of it is a skill. It's not the art. Like for example, like playing guitar, it's like playing a scale is a skill. But you know, playing a solo like Richie Blackmore is an art. You know, it's kind of like there's. I think that's the distinction. And to me, um, AI basically is a is a tool which replaces a skill. It's not art itself. Yeah, anyway. sure. We could go down a rabbit hole with that one. We could, so we'll, we'll leave it on that note there, brother. But there are two really good things happening with Tesseract soon. The first being the Tour of Australia starting in Brisbane on May the 2nd, and the second being the album War of Being, which is out September 15th. And I dare say you're going to have a few more singles to release before then? Uh, we don't know, actually. Um, I mean, there'll probably be like another video or so from the album, but I think our focus now, once we've got this run done, is uh, getting on with some new music. So we're hoping for some new music. I say in the not too distant future, but for us, that could mean anything up to five years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so people can just be patient and take it as it comes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hoping, hoping it'll be sooner than that, but I don't want to promise anything, obviously. <laughs> no worries. All right, James. Well, thanks for your time, bro. I'll be at the Brisbane show. So the first one of the date. So I'll give you a hoi from well, the audience. Yeah, yeah. We'll grab a beer. Yeah, it's good to me, mate. I'm thirsty already. <laughs> <laughs>